Hey everyone, this is Pete. And welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. This is Gilbert Escape from Drill. Uh, this was released in 1989 by a company called Again Again, who I've never heard of since then. Um, I don't know if this was the only thing they did or if this is the only thing that I've, I've seen by them, but uh, yeah, this, this is certainly the only time I personally have heard of them. A um, couple of interesting things about this. This is a game that was written in STOS BASIC, which is a programming language for the Atari ST based on BASIC, as you might imagine. Uh, it was written by a guy called Francois Lionet, or Lionet, I've never been quite sure how to pronounce that. Um, and he went on to produce the Click series of game and multimedia creation tools for PC. So that included Click and Play, Games Factory, and Multimedia Fusion. Multimedia Fusion's latest version is in fact still being used by a lot of indie developers to make games today. So there's uh, a, bit of, uh, a bit of history there. Um, so yeah, this was written in STOS Basic and then compiled uh, so it ran faster and more efficiently and so on. Um, so that's a bit about the development. Um, Gilbert the Alien, uh, the main character of this, was not an original creation for this. He was actually a, um, a mascot for a Saturday morning kids TV show called Get Fresh, which ran between 1986 and 1988. And uh, Gilbert was deliberately designed to be disgusting. So he was constantly dribbling with snot and sort of making obnoxious comments and all that sort of thing. Um, Get Fresh, uh, the program, was a reasonably conventional Saturday morning kids TV show with a sort of slight sci-fi feel to it. So the presence of Gilbert was justified by the fact that the, uh, the cast of the show was supposedly flying around on this ship called the Millennium Dustbin, which would visit, visit various parts of the UK and uh, sort of do special events and meet up with people and do vox pops and all that sort of thing. Um, one note thing, noteworthy thing about the show is that they had a phone-in version of the game Xenon, uh, which you may recall from uh, the last time around the alphabet in this series. So someone would phone in and they'd shout left, right, up, down, fire, uh, and someone who was blindfolded would be playing the Amiga version of the game uh, and having to follow the orders of the person barking instructions down the telephone in the hope of I don't know, winning something probably. Um, Gilbert himself, he got two of his own series uh, after Get Fresh concluded um, in 1988 and 1990. Oddly enough, one of those was a late night TV talk show, um, which is bizarre, but yeah, it's uh, that, was, that was the early 90s, I guess. Um, the character was the creation of uh, a guy called Phil Cornwell, who also played him, uh, it, it was the voice of him anyway. Um, Cornwell is now well known for his work on the TV show Dead Ringers, which is mostly based around uh, impersonations of celebrities and politicians and that sort of thing. It's a, a sort of fixture of Radio 4 and they've done a TV show of it since then as well. Um, and uh, for those who are a fan of the virtual band Gorillaz, he's also the voice of Murdoch, if, uh, yeah, if you ever wondered. Anyway, let's take a look at the box. So on the front here, we've got a lovely picture of Gilbert, which really summons, summons, summarizes what he's all about. Uh, so covered in snot, eating beans and farting. So uh, I can relate, definitely. So, and on the back, we've got a bit of blurb and some screenshots. So Gilbert is back at drill and feeling very pleased with himself. Unfortunately, the rest of his fellow Drillians are not quite so happy. In fact, they are green and slimy with envy. Gilbert is invited back to Earth to do a new TV series, but to avoid more of his bragging, the Drillians remove parts of the Millennium Dustbin, remember that from Get Fresh, and spread them about the planet. You are in control of Gilbert, most unusual, and to get him back to Earth within 24 hours, you have to beat the Drillians at their favorite arcade games, and in turn, they will give you clues to find the missing parts of your craft. Okay, let's have a look inside. So the game itself comes on two floppy disks. Not unusual for the time, certainly. Um, and then other stuff we've got in this box here. So we have some instructions for an iron-on t-shirt transfer. Enclosed, you will find one plastisol transfer from again and again. Uh, that's interesting. So I don't know if that's still in here, actually. We'll have a, have a look. Um, before we get to that, we do have a poster. So if you wanted to proudly celebrate your love for snot-encrusted fart monsters in your bedroom, then you could do that. This is evidently not one I put up in my own bedroom, because I've got a fair few games that did come with posters that um, the posters have since disappeared because I had them on my walls. And 
I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but this is the iron-on t-shirt transfer. Um, and it's not Gilbert, it is the logo for again again. So should you really want to celebrate a software developer and or publisher that I've never heard of on your t-shirt, then you can. Um, for me, I think I'll keep that in there as a collectible. Anyway, that's enough talking about Gilbert and his snot and his flatulence. Let's go play Gilbert Escape from Drill. Okay, here we are with Gilbert Escape from Drill, an action adventure in which Gilbert has to find the five pieces of the Millennium Dustbin. Um, yeah, and you do that by exploring various locales and playing arcade games, basically. I never really got very far with this game as a kid. I was never quite sure exactly what to do. But let's see how we get on with this today. So we start outside this milk bar here being attacked by all manner of things. Let's go inside and see what happens. So you can fire snot at your enemies by pressing the fire button. But then the most the sort of most important thing for you to do while you're playing this is to go and play these um these arcade games. So this game here, Brain Drain. This is, as you might expect, a kind of uh, version of concentration. But you're playing against an opponent. Alright, 16 for me. And you get points according to the numbers that you match. But you don't get an additional turn if you do get a, a match, though. I'm not playing this terribly tactically, am I? Where was the other one of those? Not there. Right, if you do that, that swaps your two scores. That's quite an entertaining one to get hold of. Seven. There we go. Okay. Going pretty nicely now. Game over. Does win... Okay, so you actually have to complete the game as well as... Um, as well as winning. So we actually have to clear the board. So let's try that again and be a bit quicker. Can we play that again? Apparently we cannot. So one thing you'll notice is that taking damage from enemies doesn't result in uh, loss of life or anything like that, but it does result in loss of time. See a massive gift shop. Let's 
seem to be many other places to go at the minute. Let's keep going this way and see what we can find. Nope, nothing going on there. Yeah, another milk bar. Another game to play? You are challenged to a game of Sprout Wars. Save the Sprout, score over 10,000 points. Okay, so this one is a sort of um, XY shooter. So you push left and right to move the Gilbert at the bottom and up and down to move the Gilbert at the side. And you alternate between firing. Oh, and you're supposed to hit the red ones, not the green ones. So I've already been failing miserably at this. Yeah, and you lose health from that bar at the side um, when you hit one of the sprouts from the look of things. There we go, game over. Poorly done. And as you see, when you fail an arcade game, you lose an hour from your time at the bottom. So I think sort of part of the trouble with this game really is that, um, I mean this, it's very difficult to hit the enemies for one thing, so you end up losing a lot of time from that. So you just like, don't necessarily feel like there's a huge amount of control over what you're doing. I mean you still get points for walking into the enemies and killing them, but... Yeah, aside from that, it's kind of difficult to feel like you're in full control of what's going on. And the instruction manual for the game doesn't really help in what you're supposed to be doing. So obviously, yes, you explore, you find stuff. You play those arcade games. But it doesn't make it at all clear where you're supposed to be going what the mechanics are. And so you tend to find yourself just kind of wandering a bit aimlessly like we're doing here. And hoping that you run into something interesting. As you've probably noticed, this is also one of many games from the time period where making a map uh, would be to your advantage. Particularly, as this seems to be a very large game, or are we just looping round and round? I think we're just looping round and round, aren't we? Let's see if we can get back to the city. We don't seem to be being terribly productive out here. Are we forever lost in the desert now? I think we might be. <laughs>
Oh yeah, um, where are we? Now this is starting to look more familiar again. No. Well, I'm totally lost. <laughs> So we should be back in the town now. Let's have another look around here, so we can find any more games to play. Because that's the main point of this game, is to um, play the games, get the clues, and find the parts of the ship. Another milk bar. Let's see what's offer here. We're challenged to a game of greed. So, I mean, obviously this game is not particularly good, but a few things have stuck with me from it over the years. Uh, particularly this piece of music here for playing the arcade games. Oops. Ah, so this is Snake, I guess. Okay, good stuff. Now, question is, how much of this do we need to do in order to get our clue? Oh, those enemies are really annoying. They make it a lot harder than it would be otherwise. And you can't shoot them or anything, so you just have to try and anticipate where they're going to be moving. And game over. Not doing too well today, are we? Hmm. So at least the graphics are nice. That's a very good rendition of Gilbert in pixel art there. So there is that to be said for the game. And his sprite looks pretty much like he's supposed to as well. I like the fact that his sprite is sort of dribbling slightly. But yeah, things like how difficult it is to actually hit the enemies with your snot and that kind of thing. It, it just makes this not quite as fun as it could be, I think. There's this potential for a really fun game here. But just the just the execution just could be so much better. Can't do anything with that. It also doesn't give you a lot of feedback on whether these are objects you can interact with or anything like that. Again now. The slippery slimy sewer. So I'm guessing that these places that aren't the town are probably the places where you find the parts of the ship. Um and so presumably you need to complete one of those arcade games, which will then tell you, oh, there's something interesting in the sewer. Or such like. Or maybe helpfully informing you that the sewers are through muck plops. Now, my one question is, once you've failed one of those arcade games, how do you then replay it? That seemed to be something we were having a, a bit of difficulty with. Because you don't seem to just be able to walk straight back up to it. Ah, okay, so 
I think you have to either leave or go and play one of the other arcade games before you can try again. So you can't just repeatedly grind out the same one. Okay, let's pay careful attention. Alright, pretty sure I for Oh no, that's a six. Oh, I'm, I should just do this logically rather than... A willow. Hooray! Points! Ooh. He has more points. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> Embarrassing myself with my concentration skills here. Well, we're not going to win today, are we? We need to try and force him to get that divide one, I think. Ah, there we go. Victory. Hooray! Solve this one, Smarty Pants. If your plans go down the drain, you will be closer to your goal. Press the fire button. Okay, so yeah, I was right. And so we do need to go and have a look in the sewers to see what we can find. One thing I do quite like about this game, despite its numerous issues, is um, the very British tone it has to it. I mean, Gilbert was a very British character. Very much a product of his time and where he came from. And so just, just, the, just the tone of this game is exactly the sort of humour you'd expect from both the character Gilbert and from kids TV of the period as well. Okay, let's have an explore of the sewers. I, I don't have a notepad to hand, so I'm not going to make a map or anything, but we'll have a quick explore. Um, if we don't seem to get anywhere, we'll call that there, I think. Because you've hopefully got a, a good feeling for how this game works by this point. Can we jump on those platforms? No, we can't. Gunk tank, keep off. So as you can see, there's, I mean, there's not a ton of depth to the sort of exploration mechanics and the combat mechanics and so on. The enemies just pretty much fling themselves at you or fly in random patterns across the screen. And about the best you can do is try and avoid them with try very much being the operative word. In some ways it almost doesn't feel worth even trying. Just because you, you get points for killing them if you run into them anyway. And I don't know how generous that time limit is in the grand scheme of things, but it certainly seems like it'll be fairly generous. Now, how do we get back up is the question. Or are we stuck? <laughs> because I'm beginning to think... I have a horrible feeling that we might be stuck down here. So that's where we came down. But... There's no... Doesn't seem to be any means of getting back up again. You don't seem to be able to go through those holes in the back of the wall. I 
can't do anything with these. These aren't pathways, they're just marks on the floor. Can't jump up there either. Can't climb up the pipe. Can't go through that door. What's this? Oh, he dropped a cake. Not seen it. Not seen an enemy drop an item before. And that looked like a sort of unique enemy as well. Yeah, I think we're stuck. So, well, I guess that's brought our session to an end for now. Uh, unless I'm really missing something obvious, but... Hello, another one of you. Oh, I've collected a cake. And what does that do? It certainly doesn't help us... Certainly doesn't help us climb up out of the sewers. I think we'll leave that there for now. You've, you've got an idea of how this game works by now. So there's some interesting ideas just executed, not brilliantly. But it may well be worth a look if you if you have a particular enjoyment of action adventures from this particular era. Or an interest in the Gilbert character. And he's worth looking up because he's, he's quite amusing and very much of his time. So if you're interested in kind of British children's humour from the late 80s, early 90s, then yeah, look him up. But for now, I'll just say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays, and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects moegamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and videopackgames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you.